The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Cowboys Storyline with Nick Eatman. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Cowboys Storyline. It is Friday, September the 6th, and it is time to talk a little more Cowboys Browns. Last chance for the game on Sunday. Last chance on this show. Obviously, people will be talking about it uh, for the next couple of days until we kick things off there. Of course, we did see a game last night. Um, and if that's the way this football season's going to go... Bring it. I'm here for it. That was that was awesome. If you are a fan of football, if you are a, a Chiefs fan, then then that's that's probably even better. Uh, Ravens fan, not so much. You know, game of inches always has been, always will be. And uh, that was that was insane, insane game there. Uh, all I could think of really is Peyton Hendershot on the sideline pushing people around, uh, protecting his quarterback that he just met, which is awesome. But uh, great game uh, nonetheless, and uh, we'll see how that goes as far as a theme for the rest of the season. All right, it's September the 6th, 9 6, uh, and it's 10 o'clock, but 8 is the number that I'm looking at right now because 8 is the age of Logan Bean. Chris Beam's son. That's right. Eight years old today. Today. All right. Happy birthday. He's been on this this set before. We actually did a kids podcast with him one time. Hilarious kid, for sure. All right. Logan, happy birthday to you. Keep your dad in check this weekend. Uh, actually, he's going to Cleveland, so hopefully if there's anything going on, y'all will do that tonight. All right. Let's go to the phone lines, 888-855-2297. I know you guys want to talk about this game, and let's start it off with Irene. She's in Virginia. Irene, what is up? Hey, Nick. How you doing? How are you? This is the second time I've <laughs> good, talked good, to you. Good. I, I actually answered the phone earlier back in the back. That's rare, but I did. I answered. I had no idea how to work the hold button or any of that stuff. I know how to pick it up and say hello, and I got to talk to Irene. Irene, what's up? Um, but I messed you up. I thought you were Chris for a sec. Hey. <laughs> I have a special guest here. Say hi. 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 That's my mom. <laughs> hey, mom. Hey, Irene's mom. How are you? So, hey. Hey, mom. Are the Cowboys going to win this weekend? Yep. All right. Uh, there you go. Official score prediction. <laughs> more so. importantly, more importantly than that, can I ask her a question? How are, oh, how he are you feeling? He how, has a question for you. How are you feeling? How are you feeling, mom? Oh. Uh, half and half. half, and half. Okay, All you're right. on the right path. All right. All right. Well, that, that's good. That's good. Hope she, hopefully she feels better. At least, uh, she, at least she's able to, to talk on the phone today, this morning. So that's good. I know she's she been is. She she's is. been not feeling so great. So hopefully she is doing better. So that's a friend of mine. Hold on. Okay, I got to be quick. We're out of the appointment, but uh, you know, hype for the game. Uh, honestly, when I went through, I have the Cowboys at ten and seven. This was one that I. It's a toss-up for me, but I will say the injury to the uh, left tackle and then the other, I think it's another offensive lineman coming back from injury, mm-hmm. um, that gives me some confidence that Micah and Tank and Nealon are going to have a good yeah. day. So, you know, hopefully it's a Cowboys win and that toss-up becomes a win for me. All but right. Anyway, got to be quick, got to go. All <laughs> Thank right. you Th- so much. Thank Bye-bye. you. Thank you. Appreciate that. I know if I was taking my mother to the doctor for an appointment, I, I just I don't think I would be calling in and, and, and to a to a show just to talk about the game. I love that. I'm just saying people are better than me. That that is awesome. That's why I love I love doing this show because it's just it's you, you, it never ceases to amaze me. This is great. All right, all right. What else is great? We got. Joe in Stanford. Well, I haven't said that in so long. Joe in Stanford on the line. Is that right? What's up, my friend? How are you? What is going on? I haven't hey, heard from I'm, you in forever. Yeah, I, I'm I'm out of work today, so man, I knew I had to call Storyline. You did. I, I, I did. I, I got to meet you uh, not too long ago when you were here for practice, and we've done some some text line questions. But it's good to have you on the phone. Absolutely, man. It's great to be here, and it was good to meet you, man. Right. I've been wanting to do that for a long time. Yeah. So, um, 
first, I wanted to say uh, hello to Irene. I've hooked up with her on the X account that you talked about the other day mm-hmm. uh, with the guy from, uh, was it? Florida. Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Storyliners. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, it's pretty cool. I, I'm, I'm starting to get hooked up with that. I wish I'd have known about that fantasy uh, uh, football league. I sure would have tried to hop on that. Maybe next year, huh? Yeah, maybe. Maybe it'll be yeah. a whole whole league that they, they can they can figure that out, different divisions and stuff like that. Who knows? So. Right on. So, uh, a few things. Uh, first of all, I think that our offensive line is going to shock people this year. I really feel good about the rookies. And if Terrence Steele can get back to maybe 90% of what he was a couple years ago before the knee injury, I just think we have something really good going. I think it could be sort of similar to the 2016 offensive line, I'm hoping. I, th- I really see that. I think BB is a ferocious run blocker, and I think he's only going to get better every game. So, yeah. um, And I think this draft is going to be one of the best drafts we ever had. I, I mean, I don't know that for sure, and it always has to pan out. But, man, it looks cool to me, and I'm excited. I, I'm not going to have a prediction on the game. Uh just that we win. That's all I'm going to say. Just we win. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Uh, that, that's that's kind of the way I, I think as well. Thanks, Joe, for calling. Thanks, Nick. Uh, Have a good one. You too. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get a hold of Beam here. Um, if if they if they can get those guys blocked up front, that's that is obviously. I mean, you could say that about any game, really, at any team. The high school games tonight, college games tomorrow. Saturday, Sunday games, Monday night game, you know, get them blocked up front and you can do a lot of things. If you get if you can't, then you're not going to function at all. So you can always say that about the offensive line, but I do think that is kind of what's going to trigger uh, everything this year is, is how they get that, um, get, get, get it blocked up front, how it affects the run game, how it affects Dak's comfort level in the pocket, how they can function and, and throw, throw the ball around the yard. I think it, it starts there, and you know, and, and as Irene pointed out too, you know, the the, the Browns have their problems on on the line. So, um, you know, I, I just feel like it's going to be one of those games uh, that that the O line play is going to affect anything and everything there. All right, um, having a little bit of technical issues, I think. I'll tell you, we have two lines open right now. 888-855-2297. I got one for you. Unless you have Sorry. a caller. Okay, we're having some issues with our communication here on this uh, iPad. Uh, Chris, wh- who do you got online? Randy and Texarkana. Who's that? That is me, sir. <laughs> hey, I tell you what. If you don't get in early, and you've done it again this morning, but if you don't get in early with these calls, you run out of questions because everybody's covering it. Your, your audience is getting wider. Because yesterday, <laughs> I was telling myself, I said, self, if Nick answers, I'm going to bring up D lineman that's not even on the team and here take piss out of well that was taken from me. And then I was like, Well, I guess I'll talk about it. it's probably gonna be one in the trenches in a low score game. Well hell you took that one from me. So I was like, you know what? If Chris finally answers, I'll just sing. Ah, well hell that was taken from me too. So I don't know what else to talk about until the game happens, man. <laughs> we did have an interesting show, didn't we? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, when awesome. this call's over, I'm going to bring that up one more time. Um, actually, I'm not going to bring it up yet. I, I just re- remembered something. I, I forgot my prop. But, yes, okay, go go to your question. Randy, go to your question. Uh, I, I was just going to go to uh, predictions, and uh, I'm going to say that Dallas is going to probably score some points. Cleveland's going to probably score some points. One of them's going to win, and for the season – Dallas is going to play all their games until it's over, and about half of you are going to be pissed and half of you are going to be happy. And I guess I'll leave you with this. What's the, what's more important than the first invention of the first telephone? What? The invention of the second telephone. Okay. <laughs> Go Cowboys. All right. We'll see right. you, brother. Good one. Nice, right, nice joke there. That reminds me of Jerry's joke that he would always say, always, when the when the – when people were showing people the stadium, uh, and they couldn't get over the, how how big the scoreboard was, the the you know right there the 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 screen right, and he was like, yeah, "There's only one other like that in the world." And they're like, "Really? Yeah." He's like, "The other side," um, and that that would be his joke, and, it, and that reminds me of that one there. All right, good stuff. Going in and out here. Um, 
All right, let's go to break here, Chris. Let's take an early break, um, and then uh, we'll get we'll get back to some phone lines and uh, some text messages as well. Let's go right break on the storyline. Are you the 2024 Dallas Cowboys Fan of the Year? The Dallas Cowboys and Captain Morgan are celebrating extraordinary, inspiring, and original fans. Nominate yourself or the biggest Cowboys fan you know for a chance to be named the 2024 Fan of the Year and win prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash Fan of the Year. Go Cowboys! Discover Aiden, the official luggage partner of the Dallas Cowboys and Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Known for top-tier engineering and craftsmanship, Aiden offers more than just bags. Originating from Australia and designed in New York, it merges fashion, design, and culture. Used by Dallas Cowboys players, staff, and the entire organization, Aiden provides style and functionality for all travelers. Visit AidenTheBrand.com and use code AidenXCowboys for 25% off your purchase. Travel like your favorite stars with Aiden. Back to Cowboys Storyline. Mets Tour is back. Head to AT&T Stadium on Tuesday, September the 10th for a showdown between the Mexican and Canadians men's national soccer teams. Don't miss another match in Arlington, Texas. Tickets on sale at SeatGeek.com, the official ticketing partner of AT&T Stadium. All right, let's go to the phone lines here. Ian in Amarillo is next. Ian, what's up? Hey, Nick. What's up, man? Uh, Game week. Let's get it. Uh, I had a question for you. Okay. And this is like, this isn't uh, what you think will happen. This is a what you want to happen question. Okay. All right. Okay. So if the bar for these running backs is a thousand yards, if that's the goal, would you rather see a breakout year from Deuce or Rico or a bounce back year from either Zeke or Dalvin Cook? Personally, I hope Zeke gets a thousand, but I'm just curious what you're thinking, man. Oh. Now hang up and listen. Man, that's a good question. I mean, because either way, I mean, you're, you're getting the production. It's just it, that it just comes down to, to preference. You know, that's just like it, it's kind of like you're on your fantasy team, you know, your fantasy football team. It's like, wh- who do you want to have a 40 point game? I mean, doesn't really matter as long as someone does it. Um, I, I would lean towards, though, I, I would lean towards Zeke. Um, or doubt, I mean, uh, either, either way that, that, that's a good question because it's, it really doesn't matter. So maybe it's not a good question. I mean, I, I'm just saying, because either way, if you're getting a thousand yards, I, I, I think though, I would lean towards Zeke and, and, and cook mainly because of what else do you bring to the table? And so a bounce back year from a guy that's been really good then you're bringing more things, especially from Zeke's standpoint. You're getting a guy that can help you in a lot of ways. He's a very good blocker in pass protection. He picks up yardage on short, you know, on third and short and third and goal down there. But if he's having that kind of success, that means he's also doing other things, breaking off some some other big runs as well. So, all that being said, I mean, I think it's it doesn't really matter as long as someone is somebody that teams are afraid of. And that's that's really the goal ultimately of what you're trying to do. But I, I would I would pick, you know, Zeke. I would say Zeke and or or Cook, one of those guys, because they've done it. They're 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 highly productive in the past. And if they could bring that back, then that's just another element that teams having to uh worry about. All right, Travis in San Antonio, you are next. Nick, what's going on? How are you? I'm good. Shout out to Logan. Uh, happy birthday to him and uh, to Beamer. That's cool. Um, and then I also wanted to shout out, since it's Cleveland week, shout out to Joaquin Noah for his uh, favorite uh, famous quote of, I've never heard anybody say I'm going to Cleveland on vacation, and neither are the Cowboys. They're going there to get a W. So shout out to both of them. And then I had uh, one observation um, or one thought on offense and one on defense, and uh, see what you think. Um, I'm wondering, I know they're going to have a plan this week, right? Like, I know everyone is excited about Tyler Guyton. I know um, we like where he's going, and he's already proved me wrong because I, I, can, I can say it, I wasn't the biggest fan of the pick, but he's proved me wrong to this point, which is great, and I'm rooting for him. And 
I do think they're going to have a plan, obviously, uh, to deal with Miles Garrett. But I'm wondering, Nick, if you think maybe this week um, is going to be, I think, more Jake Ferguson centric than even C.D. Lamb. I know everyone's excited about C.D. Lamb, but just because you know he's been there all week, and I wonder if uh, Mike McCarthy is going to use more two tight end sets, maybe help deal with uh, Miles um, in the and help maybe establish a running game, but be able to use the tight ends to help chip him a little bit and make him have to work. Um, so that was my thought on offense. And then on defense, a caller touched on it, I want to say yesterday, Nick, or maybe two days ago. Um, but I was wondering what you thought. Like, I'm really interested to see how Zimmer um, deals with Njoku, for instance. So I guess I'm kind of tight end focused right now. I'm kind of interested to see how they deal with Njoku. I know people have talked about Omari and Jerry Judy, but I want to see how they go about dealing with Njoku. Like, is it more... Um, Demo in three linebacker sets where they let him kind of just handle him, um, or is it maybe they utilize like a Mukwamu um, who played a lot in the slot? I and mean, I know he's the backup, but mm-hmm. you know that, that bigger body. I wonder if they utilize him maybe in that matchup against Njoku. So I just want to see what you thought. Yeah, Marquise Bell. I mean, uh, you know that's that that's, too. Yeah, that's, that's another guy in there too. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's the thing they they've got some of those pieces like like we saw last year with with Dan Quinn's defenses where they were you know he, he liked to put safeties in there in the linebacker spot uh, but but you know I, I just it, and overshone to me I, I'm very curious about what he's gonna do I mean I, I, I Kalen Carson's a guy we're all excited to watch and Guyton and um, and BB but but you know overshone he's not a rookie but he you know, basically is um, just because we haven't seen him play. And so to answer your question, I mean, I just think what makes great defensive coordinators great is the fact that they, they, they don't just do one thing and, and they're going to mix it up. You're going to see all kinds of different guys uh, there at the linebacker spot. You've got about six options there um, to play those three spots. And, and, you know, I think when, when you throw in, you know, Kendrick's, and Overshone, and Leah Fowl, and Clark, and then Micah Parsons at times. Um, and then, you know, I, I'm, I'm adding other, other guys in there as well, like um, uh, the safeties there, Mukwamu and, and Bell, if they're active. And Mukwamu's got to be uh, active there. But but that's, that's really um, – that's what I'm looking at as far as the linebackers is they got so many different pieces they could play on different packages and for different down and distances. All right. All right, let's uh let's go to the next caller here. We've got um uh, uh someone I know pretty well, Dr. Sunshine in Fort Worth. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I was racking my brain last night trying to answer a question. I said, Well Nick will know the answer and I started to call you, but it was two AM. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for, for saving it. <laughs> okay, I got I got it for you though right now. Uh, we don't know the exact starters on Sunday, but of the projected starters, can you tell me how many of those players had their first training camp with the Cowboys? Hmm. Out of all 22 starters? Yes. 18. I'm, I'm, I was I don't know thinking any... the same number. I don't, I don't know. know that. I don't know. But, but isn't that a high number? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, and we should be proud of that. Basically, home, yeah, homegrown, homegrown talent that that you have there. It's easier to probably go the uh, the other way. So I bet, I bet a lot of teams don't have anything close to that. I know Washington doesn't. <laughs> no, no, Washington. Yeah, Washington has a lot um, that probably started out in Oxnard. I mean, that's probably <laughs> where their their training camp was. Uh, yeah, I can I can think of um, of Cooks. Cooks is is the the uh, Cooks Kendricks and. Probably one of those deep tackles, maybe you know, like uh, Jordan Phillips if he starts, or right, Josephs right. or something like that. But yeah, I mean, um, anger. It's, it's not really one of your starters, but um, but he's you know he's your punter. But that's 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 a good point, you know, because that what basically what you're saying is is that the, the Cowboys have built this team from the core, and so uh, all unless you have a list, all I have is is <laughs> no. I think I think you're right. I, I was just trying to figure out exactly. And, and, and hats off to, to Hooker. Will McClay. Hooker, um, Malik Hooker, Kendricks, Cooks, and a defensive tackle like a Jordan Phillips or Linval Joseph. Oh, wow. You know, but but they could start Mozzie and Osa, which they, actually they might do that. 
So that yeah, that 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 kind of takes the D tackle spot. I've got I've got three guys because your entire offensive line um, would be there. So yeah, tight end, quarterback, running backs now with Zeke back, uh, assuming they don't start Dalvin Cook, which I doubt they will. But yeah, Cooks, Kendricks, and Malik Cooker. So how about nineteen? Anyway, I, anyway, I just thought of that, and of I thought that would be hats off to us for doing that, building our for own sure. team. All right. All right. Talk to you later, man. Right. You have a great day. You too. Bye, Dad. But y'all didn't know that was uh, my dad that, that called, and I appreciate the call then and not at uh, 2 a.m. All right. Um, I'm going to get another break out of the way. I'm going to knock this last break out of the way. I'm going to do a couple of other things, uh, and we'll be right back here on Cowboy Storyline. Are you the 2024 Dallas Cowboys Fan of the Year? The Dallas Cowboys and Captain Morgan are celebrating extraordinary, inspiring, and original fans. Nominate yourself or the biggest Cowboys fan you know for a chance to be named the 2024 Fan of the Year and win prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash Fan of the Year. Go Cowboys! Discover Aiden, the official luggage partner of the Dallas Cowboys and Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Known for top-tier engineering and craftsmanship, Aiden offers more than just bags. Originating from Australia and designed in New York, it merges fashion, design, and culture. Used by Dallas Cowboys players, staff, and the entire organization, Aiden provides style and functionality for all travelers. Visit AidenTheBrand.com and use code AidenXCowboys for 25% off your purchase. Travel like your favorite stars with Aiden. Back to Cowboys Storyline. The Dallas Cowboys and Captain Morgan are celebrating extraordinary, inspiring, and original fans. Nominate yourself or the biggest Cowboys fan that you know for a chance to be the 2024 Fan of the Year and win prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash Fan of the Year. All right, let's do another thing that we uh, haven't done yet before. This is a new thing we're featuring this week. Uh, it is sponsored by Yeti. Yeti. So if you have a Yeti, you got to check this out here. This thing keeps it cool, keeps it hot. Anything you want to put in here in your drink, if you're a coffee drinker, drinker, which I am not, definitely have never even tasted coffee. Don't know what that's like, but you can put a lot of things in here and smoothies, keeping it cool, keeping it hot. But what we're doing this year is we're going to sponsor the Hot Take of the week. Yeti sponsors the hot take of the week. Could be from me, could be from you, could be something that, that somebody brings. Bring in the heat. And the spirit of this show is to is to be engaged with others and, and hear what you guys are thinking and, and actually, you know, bring out points that people keep talking about. So I think for sure this week's hot take of the week goes to my guy in Pasadena, California, Jim in Pasadena. He's the one that started this whole thing about Justin Rogers. And you know what? I think that the point is, is it doesn't matter if you agree with, with the topic. I didn't agree. I don't agree that losing him was, was, was a, a big, big loss. We'll see. We'll find out down the road if that's the case. But more than anything, Jim, you brought it. You brought it. You, you were passionate about it. And then what it did is that it... it inspired others to talk about it some didn't didn't agree some people did but yet it was two days three days later we're still talking about it and that's happened before that is going to be always going to be the hot take of the week if somebody can do something anthony in miami did it last year and, and this year michael and colton california said regular season doesn't matter and that spurred a lot of people to to jump in and call and talk about it that is is what a real hot take is. And this week's hot take of the week goes to Jim in Pasadena. Hot take sponsored by Yeti. Get you one of these. We're not giving these out. Sorry, it's not one of those that we send out. You're just, you, you're, we, you get your name in the paper. That's what, what it is. Good job there for Jim in Pasadena. Uh, no hard feelings, uh, obviously. Keep, you got a point like that and you're bringing it. I love it. Call, I didn't agree. We don't have to agree, but definitely it was, it was a really good, it was a good take. And it was one that, that we uh, certainly wanted to uh, mention here on the Yeti. Hot take of the week goes to Jim in Pasadena. All right, let's go to the caller here, David in Fort Worth. David, what's up? How you doing, Nick? Good. How are you? 
Pumped up, man. Pumped up. Hey, I, I want to be quick. I want to carry on a, a tradition that I did last season by calling in, giving my score prediction and a crazy prediction. Okay. Last right. se- last season, I used to throw my wife out there too, but she's not here tonight or today, so she's missing out. Right. Uh, my sc- my score prediction, I think it's going to be with the offensive line struggles and a little bit of rust. You know, I think it's going to be a little bit uh, lowish scoring. So I want to say Dallas nineteen thirteen. Uh, my crazy prediction, I think Carson is going to get picked on. And I think the optics may even look bad at times when it's not even his fault. If I'm not mistaken, I know Zimmer likes to run zones, maybe cover two, cover three. So it may look like he's in man-to-man. Really, he's not. You know, someone's getting behind him or something. It may look bad. The optics may look worse than it is. But I think he gets picked on. But I think late in the game, he gets a big uh, time turnover. I don't know whether it's going to be, you know, if he skips the ball or if he gets a pick. But I think he's going to make a play that's going to bolster his confidence before going into the rest of these games where he needs to be filling in. So, Short and sweet, Nick. I just wanted to get in. I'm super pumped up. I appreciate you so much, and you guys have a great day. Thank you. All right. I've seen that that play out a lot, uh, you know, with, with different games over the years where a cornerback struggles and struggles, and, and then at the end makes the play. I feel like Isaac Holt did that in a game way back against the Giants one year, or, or um, yeah, it was the Giants where he, he had been picked on all day and he gets a pick at the end of the game. Larry Brown had some moments like that. Uh, Mo Claiborne, uh, I'm talking about the player, not not the guy in Oxnard. The actual player, Mo Claiborne, had had an interception in the Rams game, I believe, in 2014 after he'd given up some big plays. So that that kind of happens. And that's a sign to me of, you know, a, a guy that, that can just stay in there. That's what you have to do at cornerback. You have to have a bad memory. You have to keep playing. You have to have confidence. Um you know, there's there's just a, a level of swag that you have to to have and carry yourself with, and I think Kalen Carson has that. We're gonna find out what he can do, and yeah, they're gonna pick on him, and they should. I mean, they that that's certainly what they should do, um, and they're probably gonna go after Trayvon Diggs as well. I mean, they they're you know that's that's what they're they're gonna do, but I think. How good can this pass rush be? If this pass rush is getting after Deshaun Watson and getting after those those offensive uh, tackles and, and the offensive line, then I think the cornerbacks. I mean, the ball is going to be up there. The ball is going to be in the air. It's going to be uh, you know theirs to, to take. And Diggs has shown he's a playmaker when the ball's in the air. And I saw it a few times at camp that Kalen Carson is as well. So we'll see. I think it'll be it'll have their moments. Deron Bland has done that as well. Let's let's be honest about it. Deron Bland is not a shutdown corner by any means. He gives up plays. Trayvon Diggs gives up plays, but he makes them makes some plays too. So you know, it's what's that sign say? You know, enter at your own risk. That's what that is when you're when you're throwing at those corners. Yeah, you might be able to to to, to get to get free this time, uh, but you know, every once in a while, the, the dog's chasing you, and and uh, so you got to be careful for that too. All right, Rob in Vegas is next. Hey, Nick. Here we go. Here we go. The captain. The captain speaks. What do you got? Listen, I may, I, I may be the captain, but Dylan is the most valuable player. I mean, what that guy does for the show and for all of us is, is amazing. Rob, are you giving up it, your it, C? Are you giving no, up no, no, the C no, on the C? No, no, no. Okay. Listen, you could still be the captain, you know, but you still may not be the most valuable player. So Yeah. No, that's I, good. I, I well, and a captain, a true captain, is somebody that recognizes that. Honestly, I mean that's yeah. that's that is really true. Not to get you know kind of like you know, weepy about it here, but I mean that's that, <laughs> that's really that's really what that is. That's what a true captain is, is he can see you know who's doing what, and and I love that. This is great. But um, but Rob, what do you got? We all want to hear what what you think. What do you got for this week? Well, I I I think uh, I think the first of all I. I the kickoff rule after watching that game yesterday, I think I would just blast it into the end zone every time uh, and take my chances. I, I think the key to this game, obviously, the obvious is, is Guyton, uh, but I think he'll hold his own. I think having Zeke back helps because he's, he's such a good blocker. He can help out, and then they could kind of do like Kansas City did last night where all of a sudden the running back would just peel out. They hit him. With a little pass, he picks up the audience. I think Turpin is going to make uh, a big play this game. I think they've been trying to work him in. I mean, CD and everybody, but I think I see Turpin, and I think. Listen, they have to. They have to show they can win on the road. Last, mm-hmm. you know, last year they weren't good on the road. I think they were four and five, and on grass against good teams, they haven't been very good. So I think they could they could correct that. I see a twenty four twenty win for Dallas. I think. 
I look at the quarterbacks, even last night, Lamar Jackson's very good, but Mahomes is better. And I'd look at it like uh, Deshaun Watson's good, but Dak's better. Yeah. And I just give the edge to the Cowboys in the quarterback, the most important position. I see 24-20, and I, I, I see Turpin making – uh, a big play, whatever it is. I think it's the passing game. Yeah. But uh, I, listen, I'm excited. It was a great game last night. Mm. I mean, opening night. It, you know, what? That's why when people say they want to get rid of Dak Prescott, that's the difference between preseason football and real football is the quarterbacks. It's all about the quarterbacks. The quarterback play last night was was great. It was just different. Lamar does it on the ground. He missed those that wide open throw he did. to tie the game. Um, but it's it's all about the quarterback. So I, I said uh, yesterday uh, the deal's going to get done today with Dak. My prediction is four years, fifty-seven and a half million, one hundred and eighty million guaranteed, and they're going to announce it today. That's my prediction. Fair. I don't disagree I with think, you. I don't. I. It'll. You, yeah. It'll. It won't be at two o'clock in the afternoon because that I'll be free then. But it'll be whenever I'm not free, or it'll be something when we're driving to go to the stadium or to go to the airport tomorrow. It'll be something like that. But I agree with yeah. you. Yeah, I think it'll happen today. Yeah, I, I, I think they want to announce it while they're still in 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 Texas. Wait, um, when's the kickoff and- for the Eagles and the Packers? Like whenever they're about to kick off, I could see <laughs> I could see that happen five minutes before kickoff, and we're in Brazil, and all of a sudden. Dak will dominate the headlines yep. there. Yeah. Hey. And that's a great game. That's a great game tonight because as a Cowboys fan, it's a win win. One of these teams is going to lose tonight and it helps us. Sure. So hopefully it's Philly that loses. All right. Yeah, always. All right. All right. Thanks, Rob. A lot of a lot of good stuff there. Um let's uh he talked about he talked about the quarterback play and and, and yeah, the game last night was was amazing. That's that's the the you know the frustration I would think you might have as a as a Ravens fan or whatever, and Cowboys fans have it as well. You know, but like Lamar, I mean, he's he's so fun to watch, and and he he is a an outstanding player. Um, uh, you know, better runner obviously than he is a passer, and he had he had the guy open there for at the end of the game, but then he makes a throw too at the end of the game, and uh, they just he gets taken away by millimeters there i mean that's that's oh that's sickening way to to lose a game but uh those two quarterbacks are are outstanding and and they're they're two that that keep defensive coordinators awake at night and you know that's the type of player you want to be if you're a quarterback and i think dak can get can be he's 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 pretty close to that level um you know maybe not the same as mahomes but i think in his own way he's close to to what lamar does uh, and he was close to him last year, obviously, in the MVP voting, which is kind of where you want to be there, too. All right, Zach in Atlanta. Hey, good morning, Nick. How are you? Good, man. How are you? I am doing well. Feels like Christmas weekend. Excited for Sunday. Yeah. Um, I've kind of been in my hiding hole this uh, this off season, but I'm back. Fired up. Coming back like, uh, like I never left. But um, I've got three quick notes. Okay. One... Um, I do think Dak uh, signs today, and I think they're going to troll the Eagles and announce it at kickoff tonight. Steal a little bit of the spotlight and be hilarious. Yeah. Um, I mean, any time to put down the Eagles is a good thing. Um, so that's my my prediction there. Um, and uh, second point, we know that the Cowboys were great at drafting. We're signing our own guys. This is the homegrown philosophy that McClay and the Joneses love. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a good thing. We got CD. We got uh, Dak, hopefully today, uh, or this uh, before the season kickoff. We'll have Micah. We've got a bunch of other guys under contract. So I think this season is going to be a year of the youth. There's going to be some growing pains, cutting of the teeth. I think we're going to feel kind of like uh, man, maybe the 2018 team, not necessarily with the youth, but man, every game was a one possession game, and uh, it was a, it was a, a rough start. Um, but we we scrapped our way into the playoffs, and uh, I think that's going to be it, man. We got a new line; uh, they're young, they're scrappy, they're tough. I think that'll be uh, the catalyst for a playoff run, hopefully later in the year. But um, yeah, maybe like a ten and seven record going into uh, the playoffs. I don't know if that wins the division. But um, we'll be we'll be battle tested and ready, 
Um, and we need those guys to step up. We need it, you know, because if, if we're giving out the pie to our, our stud and blue chip players, you know, we got to, we got to get some major contributions from the guys who are uh, one or two year players. And then, um, Sunday, I'm thinking 23 to 21, uh, Brandon Aubrey field goal. I think it's going to be a, a fun game. Um, and then, uh, any any words or thoughts on Kevin Ogletree and the spirit of kickoff weekend? Uh, the Kevin Ogletree game from a few, uh, man, 12 years ago now. Um, but uh, with that, I will leave you. Go Cowboys. All right. Let's enjoy the season, family. All right. See you, Zach. All right. That's a lot there. Uh, yeah, you're referring to the Ogletree game in 2012 uh, where he had, uh, I call it the Ogletree game. I mean, he didn't have an, really another one uh, where he caught a touchdown, maybe two touchdowns in that game against the uh, Giants on a Wednesday, Wednesday night against the Giants uh, in 2012. Just, uh, they were the defending champs. Uh, there was a, I think, Democratic convention, or um, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was it was something that, that, that they didn't want to have the game on Thursday night. They moved it to Wednesday. Uh, you know, obviously it's like, I don't remember that part, you know, that, that the whole – world but i do remember kevin ogletree having you know two catches there two touchdowns and he uh, earlier in the game earlier in the day he went to visit his brother in new york who had been shot and he visited him in the hospital that day and he you know told him you know inspired him have a have a great game and he, he did he had a huge game uh and then he caught like a, a clinching touched our catch on you know on a slant to to basically ice the game so that's what i remember about kevin ogletree on that wednesday night game i don't remember exactly why the game was played on a wednesday and not a thursday so that you know you can you can fault me for my priorities or if you're listening to this you probably agree democratic right. national convention democratic national convention obama was talking on thursday so they moved it to wednesday got it good job thank you chris um but yeah ogletree cowboys win the game 24 17 something like that i don't know it was something it was i'm probably off a little bit there but i do remember that game Ooh. all right bob in rio grande valley morning nick how you doing doing great it, uh i uh, did something unusual last night it uh, uh -oh. unless it's the, unless it's a cowboy game i don't watch every play in the game mm -hmm. but i did in that game last night and a couple of observations that i made and correct me if i'm wrong it uh i was looking at the play of uh, uh the big guy uh, henry the running back it uh, kind of on the back end of his career and uh you saw he made a couple of really key plays it uh, but then uh, there was a lot of two and three yards and get stuff down I think that's what we can expect out of the big guy that we got that's uh, currently uh, uh, in the running back room. And the other thing that I watched with real interest was the center for uh, uh, the Ravens. Baltimore, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, uh, that guy, uh, he was heralded as the next, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like sliced bread coming out of college. It, uh, he was supposed to be the the best center in the, in the nation and uh, – uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the, the Cowboys had him very high on their draft list, and the Baltimore traded up and, and got in front of us and got the guy. And we wound up with BB. Well, I saw him get beat last night several times. It, uh, uh, he was guilty of a holding call uh, that uh, mm -hmm. hurt them. And so uh, my point is, is that We've got some young guys that are playing for us, uh, starting at uh, at Cleveland, and uh, let's don't be too hard on them. But uh, uh, they uh, they're they're going to make their share of mistakes as they learn. It, uh, I'm looking forward to the game. I think it's going to be a great game. I do think that the Cowboys are going to come out on top. It uh, appreciate you taking my call. Have a great weekend. All right, thank you, um, Bob. Appreciate the the call. Uh, I'll say this: um, I view I I kind of remember that a little differently. I I because I remember asking specifically asking the question in the press conference that year in the draft about Lyndon Baum in the center, and they um, they didn't view him as highly as others. Others teams did. He was he was supposed to go, and he went you know in the first round or whatever. But the Cowboys. I don't even think had a first round grade on him. And it was kind of sh shocking. They liked who they had there at center. They, they didn't, um, you know, they, they didn't really want to make 
changes. They 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 thought Biotish was was just as good, and I think he ended up going to the Pro Bowl that season. So, um, and and then uh, to be fair, if Lindenbaum was having struggles last night or getting called for holding, if he was going up against Chris Jones, that's to be expected. I mean, th that guy wrecks the game. Like he he wrecks the game as in, as important. You know, he's not their third best player. I could promise you that. Everyone talks about Mahomes, Kelsey, but but that guy is is as important on the defense to what the Chiefs are doing as as you can maybe argue as Mahomes is to the offense. I mean, that's how good he is. And so blocking him is a is a problem, especially when he's gonna walk down the line and as Chris Collinsworth said, cherry pick on which guy. You know, I mean, basically, he was like playing duck, duck, goose there at the offensive line. It's like, uh, you, I'm going after you, okay. And it, and that makes everybody else have to move and switch. But I mean, a big guy like that, that's that's going to walk the line and 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 go and block. Like, that's going to be a problem. And uh, you know, and and it, he was, he was a problem. But credit the Ravens for kind of handling it there towards the end. But um, boy, they certainly, certainly, he he's a, a beast in the middle. But to your point. Uh, yeah, the BB's going to play. He's going to have some some issues early on. But, uh, you know, if, if they can make him, if he's the starter and he's a good, solid player that they got in the third round and they, they were, you know, were able, everyone's going to be watching, and I've already forgotten his name, uh, the guy from Duke, Barton, uh, Graham Barton. Everyone's going to be seeing how he does. Uh, but remember, the Cowboys got a tackle and a center. If they got two starters for, for getting one center, I think, I think it'll end up being a better deal. All right, Mike, in Birmingham, England. Mike, what's up? Hello, Nick. Actually, not in Birmingham. I don't know where I am. I'm on my way up to uh, Newcastle because it's um, the world's biggest half marathon on Sunday, the Great North Run, so I'm on my way up there. Are you so running? That, Are you running in this? knows where I am. I am running in it, yes. I'm probably not going to win this time, but um, there's 60,000 people, so I'm hoping to be somewhere in the top time half out. of that. So, time out. Uh, time out. You have won the this marathon before? No, 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 no. Have no. you ever won uh, no, um, a marathon? No, I haven't, no. Um, I'm just a, a regular um, half marathon okay. runner that will sit in the pack and, uh, okay. you know, enjoy well, the atmosphere and do the best I can. All right, okay. Well, I was still going to, like, applaud you for that. I thought that's what you were saying. But but to me, like, you've already won in my eyes when they, like, clip it on the, right there at the, at the, on, the, on the shirt and they give you the, the actual tag, whatever that, that's called. That that's more than I've ever done. Yeah. So hey, I, I applaud you for that. <laughs> Good luck in the race. Uh, stay hydrated. Is that is that something to say? I don't know. Like, running advice? Yeah. For yeah. Me? Seriously. Um, yeah. Good luck. Yeah, definitely. To you. Although uh, I'm not expecting Newcastle to be very warm, so hopefully that will be in our favour. And then it's a, a 200 mile drive home. Uh, hopefully in time for the uh, the game in the evening. So uh, um, big day Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Um, Nick, I'm, I'm so excited, and I think we've answered Michael in Colton, California's question because you can see how excited everyone is. The, yeah. the regular season does matter. Right. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's everyone's O and O. Anything can happen. You know, your rookies might be great. They might be terrible. Everyone might get injured or they might stay healthy. Even the Panthers fans should be excited today because anything can happen. So, uh, so let's bring it. And uh, I think we're better than we were last season, but... Um, Balanced with a slightly tougher schedule, I'm going for another 12 and five. I think I'm quite uh, quite confident. Um, just a, a couple of questions for you, Nick. I don't, it's gone a little bit quiet on um, Muzzy. So is that a good thing? Is that because we're quite sort of settled there? We're we're quite hopeful about what he's going to do. Where do you think we are with uh, with Muzzy at the moment? And um, Dalvin Cook, do you think that um, he gets elevated this weekend or are we going to maybe wait a week or two and uh, give him a bit more time to uh, to settle in with the squad? So uh, I'll, I'll leave those questions with you and thanks for taking the call. Thanks for the show as always. All right. Well, thank you and good luck to you on the race this week. Um, you know, the answer to the part about Mozzie, and i got to be quick here, I, I, I'll, I'll start with that part. I, I do think that... Um, you know, it's quiet on that because I mean, nothing's really happened. I mean, he hasn't played a whole lot. Uh, he, he, he missed the, the Raiders game. Uh, he had an allergic reaction, uh, and didn't get to, to fly with the team there. So I mean, we haven't really seen him do much of, of, of anything. Um, and so that's, that's why it's quiet. I mean, you could probably name, you know, other players, Jordan Lewis, or, I mean, 
Zach Martin. I mean, just it's quiet on a lot of a lot of guys. I haven't haven't seen him. Haven't done anything. Um, but I will say this: that I think the Cowboys have g given him some help. Uh, it, 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 he's going to be part of a rotation. He's not only getting help as far as physical bodies, but guys that have done it before. Jordan Phillips and uh, Linval Joseph, and they both have said that, that they're excited to work with him. And you know, Osa uh, has said it as well. He thinks that you know the, those guys will be good for the room for young players. Mozzie certainly that. So I think I think we're, it's only it's only the, the arrow should be pointed up for him. They're they're giving him help. They're letting him go out there and play, and he should be able to learn from some people uh, as well. All right, Curtis in Oklahoma is our last caller today. Curtis, what's up? Oh, last caller. That's awesome, man. Yeah. It's a uh, it's story time on storylines. All right. So um, I I actually grew up in Kansas City and uh, about two miles from Arrowhead Stadium. And, you know, we just were awful back then. It was like the mid to late 90s. It was like Steve Bono was the quarterback. And I actually, when I was playing Pop Warner, I sold candy bars in the stadium parking lot at all the tailgate parties. And we sold the most. So our team got to play another team in the Kansas City Chiefs practice stadium. And... uh yeah, I was playing nose tackle, and I went against a girl center. And so I was like, oh, I'm not going to, like, be mean to her. Put me on my backside first play. So, wow. yeah, that was uh, quite the experience. Um, but all that to say, man, like, I just remember living in Kansas City and seeing the Cowboys on TV and uh, Deion Sanders high-stepping across the TV and was like, I love that team. I want to be that team. That's my team. And so I've been a Cowboys fan ever since. And, you know, Oklahoma's losing a little bit of their Cowboy fans to uh, becoming Chiefs fans, it seems like. Um, you know, the Chiefs are killing it. I don't know if you've seen the ending last night with the toe on the line, but that definitely would not have went in favor of the Cowboys. When they were reviewing it, the people right away were like, Oh, yes, that's definitely being overturned. And I was like, how would you even know that so conclusively? Um, you know, if it was the Cowboys, they would have came up with some rule that he had Chicken Express two nights in a row. So now when your big toe's just on the line, um, it's actually considered a touchdown and we would have lost the game or something crazy like that. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, just wanted to get all that in there. The only last thing that I'll say, uh, two things, is I want um, mostly black uniforms. And the Cowboys win this weekend. Okay, I have no idea <laughs> Thanks, what that man. means. I, I'm not, am I supposed to know what that means? I don't know what that means. Um, all right, well, good stuff. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, yeah, when the the toe was on the line, it was on the line. I mean, like I was, I was hoping for, you know, really for fantasy football purposes i was kind of hoping to have more football there and it for it wasn't going to go to overtime i was hoping it they were going to go to overtime but i guess it wasn't going to because they were going to go for two but yeah uh you know i think people think that all the time the cowboys you know always get bad calls or whatever i mean if that was if, if the cowboys were the chiefs and that happened i think that you know the nfl is going to say that toes on the line so uh i yeah i, I think I, the cowboys have had some weird calls over the the last few years but I don't, I don't believe in conspiracy theories and stuff like that. I, I, I don't ever think that way. I mean, uh, and I, I've, I've said it before, uh, the NFL puts, you know, the Cowboys on Monday night football, Sunday night football, as much as anybody, they know what the following is. If, if, uh, if the Cowboy, if, if the NFL was secretly trying to keep the Cowboys out of the Super Bowl and NFC championship game for three decades, I mean, that would make zero sense at all like so that's why i don't ever believe in that kind of stuff if, if if there was a conspiracy theory the cowboys would be in the super bowl and in the nfc championship game a lot more than once every 28 years 30 years or whatever i just don't believe in that i just think they haven't been good enough when they've really needed to go win the game that's what we're going to find out sunday though are they going to be good enough to win this game against cleveland uh for my prediction i think the cowboys will win a a low scoring game. I think they win 20 to 13. Uh, I think Aubrey kicks some field goals. I think it'll be a low scoring game for most of the first half. In the second half, somebody's going to break through and make a play. I think the Cowboys will do that. I think I think Brandon Cooks is going to have a big game. Uh, he's had a really, really great preseason training camp. 
training camp, not preseason, didn't play in the preseason, but he's had a great training camp. I think that he is going to really benefit. Um, he'll benefit from from being the number one guy for most of, of, of camp. Um, and with CD and him together, I think that, that Dak has, has developed a very good connection with him. All it takes is one big strike down the field. I think Cooks uh, delivers a really big play. The Cowboys will win this game. 20 to 13. That's my prediction for you guys. Uh, great week, great show. A lot of a lot of really good calls and and good uh, debate, good discussion uh, as always. And we'll be back on Monday to talk about the Cowboys and the Browns. So for Chris Beam, I'm Nick Eatman. We will see you Monday on Cowboys Storyline. See you. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!